Question 7 is a box plot question. Kelly recorded the length of time 48 teachers took to travel to school on Monday. The table shows the information about these travel time in minutes. So this here is the information for Monday. Work out the number of teachers with a travel time of 40, uh, 35 minutes or more. Now, there's 35 minutes or more, and that relates to the upper quartile. Now, the upper quartile is the top 25%. So I know that 25% of the teachers took more than 35 minutes. So I need 25% of the total teachers, so that's 48. So 25%, I can either do 0 0.25 times 48, or I can realize that that's a quarter. So a quarter of 48, which is 48 divided by four, is 12. So the whole point of this question is understanding, or testing your understanding, of that word there, quartile, knowing that that is a quarter. The upper quartile is the top quarter. Part B wants you to draw a box plot from the information in the table above. And they've been very nice and they've given you all the information there, so this is actually one of the easiest box plot questions you can ever hope for. So I just need to draw a line on my grid for each one of these values. Um, I'm going to start with the least time, which is 5. So there's 0, there's 10, there's 5. My next value is 47. I may as well go in order that they're given to me. So there's 45, 46, 47. And then I'm going to go for my next one, which is 28. 25, 26, 27, 28. My lower quartile is 18, so 20, 19, 18. And my upper quartile is 35, so there's 35. Now, I've drawn all these lines about the same length. They're a little bit jagged. But what's important with a box plot is that you box off the middle three. So that's where your box is and then you extend from the boxes out to the quarter. So there's my box plot. I've gone a little bit a little bit off there because I'm at a bit of an awkward angle with the camera. But that's my box plot. Okay. So the next question says, Kelly then recorded the times the same 48 teachers took to travel to school on Tuesday. So this now is about Tuesday. That, remember, was Monday. The box plot shows some information about these times. Part C wants you to compare the travel times on Monday to Tuesday. So if I try and have this here... So compare the times. Well, the first thing I'm going to notice is the median. And that's the first thing you should always notice with box plot questions. This is the median for Tuesday. That's the median for Monday. So the first thing I'm going to say is that the median... And don't forget what we're talking about. It's the median travel time was higher on... Tuesday. Now that is comparing a, a fixed point on the box plot, so it's comparing the median point. That is worth one mark. However, there is another mark that would be included in the same category as that, and that is by saying that the longest journeys overall were on a Tuesday. So Tuesday had oh sorry so tuesday had the longest journey time 
So that's for one mark. Now the second mark comes from comparing the spread or the distribution. So the easiest way to do that is to look at your box plots and find the interquartile range. Um, from the Monday, I know that my lower quartile is 18 and my upper quartile is 35. So the interquartile range for Monday is 35 take away 18 which equals 17 and I'll then find my interquartile range for Tuesday so my upper quartile I can read from this is 52 my lower quartile I can read is 25 so the interquartile range is 52 take away 25 and that equals 27 so you can see quite a big difference in the interquartile range so on average Tuesdays were more spread out so for my second mark which is going to be another B mark I'm going to say that the interquartile range that's inter quartile range is larger on Tuesday and that means there is more variation in journey times and there's your two marks you will not get two marks if you make the same comparison twice so for example you will not get two marks if your two reasons are the median being a, a higher journey and the, the Tuesday being higher for the maximum question 8 requires a lot of reasoning and thinking and applying information from the question to select the appropriate information from the table so John and Alice are planning a holiday. They are going to stay at a hotel. The table shows information about prices at the hotel. There's some special offers there. Five nights for the price of four and three nights for the price of two. And, and they correspond with different dates. I'm not going to worry about that until I've seen what dates they're actually interested in. John and Alice will stay in a double room. So that's quite interesting because the table gives me prices for single rooms, which I know I'm not going to be using. So I'm interested in double rooms. They will eat dinner at the hotel every day. So they're going to eat dinner. So I'm going to be interested in this information also. They can stay at the hotel for three nights in June or four nights in November. Which of these holidays is cheaper? So I'm going to have to compare. And as always, when I can compare, I'm going to split my page. So my comparison is between June and November. Now I know what time of year I'm going, I can actually look up and see if there are any deals on this year. Or well, first of all, I should know how long they're staying. They can stay at the hotel for three nights in June. So June, three nights. Or four nights in November. So let's have a look at the offers. So the first offer was five nights for the price of four from the 1st of May to the 4th of July. Now that does include the date in which I'm going because I'm going in June. However, you need to buy four nights in order to get the fifth free. We cannot stay for four nights. So that offer does not apply. In November, there is the offer of three nights for the price of two. So I want to stay for four nights. For every two nights I buy, I get one night free. So if I buy two nights, that gives me one free. So that would give me a total of three nights. Now if I bought another two nights, I'd get another one free, which would give me six nights. So that's no use to me. I need to buy two nights, get the one free, which will give me three nights for the price of two. I then need one extra night to pay for. That's going to take me up to four nights. So I'm only actually... So I'm only actually paying for 
three nights because I'll get one free. In June I have to pay for the full three nights. Alright, now I need to look at the actual cost. So in June, I'm going to be travelling. Uh, that is here. I'm going to fall into this price range. So in June, it is £74.25 for a double room per night. So one night and one person equals £74.25. Now I know that there are going to be two people. So I can multiply that by two to start with. And that will tell me that two people will cost £148.50. And that's per night. Now I also know that I'm going to be paying for three nights. So I need to times that by three. Which will give me £445.50. So that's the total room cost. That's the room total for the couple, so for both people. Now let's look at the room cost for November. So I'm paying for three nights. One night in November costs £59.75. So one night and one person costs £59.75. So for two people, that's going to end up costing me £119.50. And I need to pay for three nights. So three nights is going to cost me £358.50. Remember, this is a calculator paper, and that's the room for the couple. So I know, sorry, I know that I need to pay that for the room in November, and I need to pay that for the room in June. Now what I need to consider is food, because they're staying for dinner. So over here we've got dinner, and it says they're going to have dinner every day. Now dinner in July, so or June even, June dinner is £31 per person per day. So dinner is £31. There are two people eating, so that will give us £62. And I am going to be there for three nights. So that's going to end up giving me £186. So that's my total dinner cost for June. Let's have a look at dinner in November. So dinner in November costs £31.75. And that's per person. I need two people. So times by two equals sixty-three pound and fifty pence. And I need to multiply that for the number of days I'm staying. Now don't fall into the trap of only times in it by three because we're paying for a room for three nights. We're staying for four nights. So you need dinner for four nights. So you then times that by four, and that will give you two hundred and fifty-four pounds cost for dinner. So now I can go ahead and find my total cost. So total cost in June is going to be my £445.50. Add my £186. And this is a calculator paper, remember, so don't try and do it mentally. That's going to give me £631.50. So now let's find my total November cost. My room costs £358.50. 
and my food costs £254, exactly. So when I add those together, that ends up costing me £612.50. Now I've done my writing a little bit too big on this exam paper and that means I can't actually fit my conclusion in because the question wants to know which of these holidays is cheaper. So in June it's £631.50, in November it's £612.50. So I'm going to write my conclusion and I'm going to have to do it up here. So I'm going to say very clearly that November is the cheaper holiday because and I'm going to reference my numbers because it costs £612.50 to stay for four nights in November compared to three nights in June which costs £631.50 so it's really important you reference your workings out if you want to get the communication marks. With regards to the mark scheme allocation you get a communication mark for communicating whatever it is that your workings out show. You also get an answer mark for having the correct total cost of June. You get an answer mark for having the correct total cost of November. Now there are two other method marks up for grabs here. You can get two method marks if both of your uh, costs go together to give the right number. However, they are split into one mark if you get at least one of the room costs right. So you get one mark for room costs and you get a second method mark if one of your dinner costs are right. So I think that's quite a generous mark boundary. Uh, mark allocation there. So that there's your five marks. Two method marks, two answer marks and a communication mark of written communication quality of written communication. Question 9 is a probability question and it's quite a tricky one actually because they mention x so you can approach it from an algebraic way. Um, I'm going to go along the lines of trying to keep it to basic probability but if you've done it in an algebraic way fantastic ask your teacher or check the mark scheme. So question 9 Mary plays a game of throwing a ball at a target. Sounds like quite an exciting game. The table shows information about the probability of each possible score. Mary is three times as likely to score two points than to score one point. And you can see that whatever the probability of her getting one point is, it's uh, been multiplied by three to find the probability of her getting two points. They want us to find the value of x. Now, as always with probability, I know that the probability of anything happening is always equal to one. So... In order to find out the probability of getting a 1 or a 2, I need to add all the numbers up. So 0.09 and 0.16 and 0.21 and 0.30. And I know that when I add those up, they give me 0.76. So in order to find out 1 and 2, I need to do 1, take away that 0 0.76 because I'm interested in everything other than those numbers. That leaves me with 0 0.24. Now that 0 0.24 needs to be split between a score of 1 and between a score of 2. And 1 is represented by 1x and 2 is 3 times whatever that is. Now this has turned into a little bit of a ratio question. Because altogether, I've got four x's, and that 0 0.24 has got to be shared between those four x's. So I do 0 0.24 
divided by 4 equals 0.06. That then, just like ratio, would go and be multiplied into however many lots of x you've got. So that would be 0 0.06. That's the answer to the question. It doesn't ask, and you wouldn't need to put it, but I'm just going to show you that if I was to do that 0 0.06 times by 3, that would then give me 0 0.18. I'm just going to make the statement on the answer line that x is equal to 0 0.06. The marks for this are an answer mark for getting the final answer right. You get a method mark for doing one take away your probabilities. And then you get a second method mark for dividing whatever you feel that probability was by 4. So that's your second method mark there. And that's a three mark question.